Well, for more on fitness trends in China and around the world, I'm joined from New York by marketing strategist Mark Grise. He's the head of Mark Grise Consulting. Mark, thanks for joining us. I want to talk nice first to about China. Almost 40,000 gyms. Are we nearing a saturation point? No, not at all. Actually, I've been living in China on and off for over 20 years. When I first moved to China in 1994-95, there were only a handful of gyms. I used to go to a gym in Beijing. It was uh, rusted equipment, and people were smoking inside it. Now, as you said before, there's about 30-plus thousand, close to 40,000 gyms in China. That's about equal to the number of gyms in the United States. In the United States, we have about 38,000 gyms. But we need to understand that just the millennial population alone in China is about over 400 million people, which is larger than the total population of the, of the United States. So I could easily see um, the amount of gyms doubling um, probably within the next uh, five to 10 years or so. I think I went to the same gym you did when I lived in Beijing, <laughs> but this was around 20 I or think 30, I saw you there. 20 or $30 a month. People are paying thousands of dollars for membership. Is the gym life turning into a bit of an elitist culture? Well, it really depends. I mean, if you look at the uh, actual fitness industry, it's very similar to the United States, where it's very segmented. There's different types of gyms from sort of mass market, low cost, franchise gyms, all the way up to boutique fitness centers. So in China, you do see those high-end boutique fitness centers within the top five tier one cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, et cetera. But in the smaller tier two and tier three cities, we're really seeing more of a proliferation of the uh, more of the mass uh, market gyms because we have to realize that the GDP per capita in China still varies um, according to the province and according to the city. So, you know, I do foresee a huge growth in boutique and very expensive gyms, again, in the richer um, cities on the East Coast. But um, I would say within the next few years, we're going to see that trend also impacting some of the tier two and also larger tier three cities in the center of China as well. And who's benefiting from the growth and what pitfalls do you predict? Um, in terms of who's benefiting from the growth, I think that obviously, first of all, the consumer is benefiting from it because if you look back, um, when you ask a typical Chinese person what, their, what the China dream was, the China dream was to make money and earn a lot of money. But right now, the China dream has morphed into more than just money, but it's morphed into having a good environment, a work-life balance, good food to eat, and also a healthy and a fit lifestyle. So I think the average Chinese consumer is really benefiting from this, but also obviously um, there's a lot of uh, sports brands and a lot of um, companies which are benefiting as well. I, I want to look a little bit beyond China. The U.S., of course, is still the world's leading uh, fitness market, but there are growing markets around the world. How has technology changed fitness? There's wearable technology and tech strength and clothing. How are these things factoring in? Actually, technology is, has, is having an enormous impact in the fitness industry, and I think it's one of the most exciting um, segments to be in. Um, you mentioned, um, when we look at technology, there's two aspects. You have the software and you have the hardware. So the software are all the apps that are being developed, but then you have the hardware. For example, right now there's a new product launched in the United States called Mirror, and it's actually um, a virtual mirror that you can mount in your house, which live streams uh, fitness classes to you almost 24 hours a day from all over the world. So, and also in terms of technology, we're looking at uh, big developments in uh, garments, for example, in smart apparel and e-textiles, which have um, conductive material or sensors embedded actually into the fiber. And I myself predict this to be a tremendous, tremendous impact in the industry. I foresee probably within the next number of years, if you wear these type of garments, it's going to help you have better form in the gym. It's going to help you have better form doing yoga. It's going to regulate your temperature. And everything could be uploaded through the actual clothes onto an app and onto your, your um, connected devices. So I actually see that the actual wearables may be shrinking as e-textiles go up. And as you know, in terms of wearables, probably one of the biggest um, companies which makes wearable devices is based in China called Xiaomi. Mark, I just saw um, a, 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 a spinning machine that you can actually uh, have in your house and log in sure. live to sure. spinning classes around the world. So some very interesting changes sure. happening. Mark sure. Grise from Mark Grise Consulting, thank you so much for joining us.